Hello friends, welcome to video series on geography. My name is Manjunath and this is my blog. In my previous video I have explained about sea flow spreading. So in this video I will be explaining about plate tectonics. And the text files for all these videos can be found in my blog. So we have begun videos on geo geomorphology. And in geomorphology we have completed these two videos before. And presently I am doing videos on tectonics. In this we have seen still till sea flow spreading. So in this video I will be explaining about plate tectonics which is also a very important concept. In next video we will see the comparison of these three theories. And then based on plate tectonics we have the mountain building process or orogeny. We will study that in detail. So plate tectonics is a theory which came after the theories called as continental drift theories, convectional current theory and sea flow spreading. So the main basis for this theory is convection current theory and sea flow spreading. We know that with the advancement of sea flow spreading theory, the continental drift theory was completely discarded. And with with the understanding of convection current theory and then sea flow spreading, a new theory got established in 1960s which was mainly suggested by McKinsey and Parker and this is called plate tectonics. So plate tectonics is a theory which is quite similar to sea flow spreading with few additions. So we will see what are these additional concepts we study in plate tectonics. So according to this, this theory earth's crust is divided into various plates. These plates are called as lithospheric plates. Usually the thickness of lithosphere is about 100 kilometers on continents whereas the oceanic lithosphere is about 30 to 5 kilometers in thickness. And the forces required for the movement of plates or what we call as plate tectonics is mainly due to convectional currents. We will see that. And then there is one more important concept called as asthenosphere. We have studied about asthenosphere and its properties in Earth's interior video. So we will see how asthenosphere is important in plate tectonics. So the first major concept under plate tectonics is continental plates, oceanic plates and then other minor plates. So according to this theory, the earth's crust is divided into various lithospheric plates. And these lithospheric plates based on whether continents are part of it or oceans are part of it, they are divided into continental plates and oceanic plates. Sometimes a plate will have both continents as well as oceans like we can see in this map that is Africa is a plate where it has continental plate of African continent and then an oceanic plate which is a part of African plate. So a plate can be a combination of both oceanic plate as well as continental plate. Mainly other plates like Eurasian plate which is majority continental plate even has an oceanic uh, plate region, likewise North, Amer North American plate and then South American plate. So all these plates have both oceans as well as continents. So coming to plates such as Indian plate, usually Indian plate is considered a separate plate. So it is a majority continent plate. And then together Indian plate as well as Australia Australian plate form Indo-Australian plate. So Australia and India are continental regions whereas the remaining part is oceanic part. And along with this there are few minor plates like Filipini plate, Caroline plate, Zondi Fuka plate and then we have Cocos plate, Nazca plate, Caribbean plate, of Arabian plate there are also uh, other minor plates called as Iranian plate then Turkey is itself a single distinct plate and there are many minor plates in Mediterranean sea. So for us all these plate interactions are very important because the formation of mountains especially like mountains like Rockies which are called as fold mountains and then we have Ains and then we have Himalayas. So all these kind of mountains and also formation of various islands like Indonesian islands and then Philippine and Japanese islands and we have Caribbean islands. So all these islands were formed mainly due to the interaction of these lithospheric plates. So we will see the, that in later but so to understand the formation of various landforms it is very important that we know about plate tectonics. So so plate tectonics is mainly based on division of uh, crustal plates into lithospheric uh, different lithospheric plates 
and these lithospheric plates are floating on a ductile medium called as asthenosphere. Asthenosphere is in a semi molten or plastic state which offers less resistance to the upper lithospheric plates. As a result, asthenosphere is very helpful in the movement of these plates. So, this is much better map on tectonic plates. You can see different plates in this map. So, what are the forces which supply energy for the plate movement? So, in my previous video, <coughs> I've explained about convectional current theory. We have seen that in convectional current theory, due to temperature differences, there is movement of rock material or magma in mantle, and this material gives rise to movement. Uh, movement of this material gives rise to convectional currents. We have seen that where the rising limbs meet, we have ridges, and where falling limbs meet, we have trenches. I've explained this in detail in my previous video called seafloor spreading, so you can take a look at that. So the main forces. The main force that drives these plates is convection currents. Usually, we can see the direction of plate movement, how it is based on convection currents. So, we can see based on these forces, different kind of landforms are formed. For example, where rising limbs meet, we have ridges, and then where falling limbs meet, we have trenches. And also, there are various other features associated with this kind of movement. For example, we see the formation of island arc which is mainly due to subduction of denser plate and we can see mountain building or volcanic mountain building due to subduction of a continental plate below an sorry oceanic plate below a continental plate. So the important concept is asthenosphere which I have already told which is a semi molten and plastic medium which helps in movement of both continental crust as well as sorry oceanic crust as well as continental crust. So this is Mohorovic discontinuity above which we have oceanic crust and continental crust. So based on these movements there are different kinds of interactions between plates. These interactions are named as based on these interactions these edges are named as divergent edge, convergent edge and transcurrent or transform edge. Divergent edge is also called as constructive edge because a new kind of landform is created at the divergent edge. Whereas the convergent edge is called as destructive landform as it deforms the existing landform. And the transform edge is neither constructive nor destructive. It is a simply a neutral movement where there is only movement of plates grinding against each other. So neither a new landform is created or the existing landform is destroyed but there is certain deformations near the plate boundaries which is less significant compared to the other two interactions. So here we can see the different kinds of interactions. So here we have divergent edge which is constructive in nature. We have seen about seafloor spreading. So seafloor spreading creates a new kind of landform on the ocean surface. And then we have something called as convergent edge as we can see in these two examples where two oceanic plates are meeting. Here two oceanic plates are converging whereas here two continental plates are converging. So at convergence the edge is called as destructive because the existing landform is deformed though there is creation of new landforms but still it is called as but still it is called as destructive edge. We can see when an oceanic plate interacts with a continental plates we see we have formation of mountains which are mainly volcanic in nature and this zone which subducts below the continental uh, continental plate is called as subduction zone usually oceanic plates are quite denser compared to continental plates as a result when these there is interaction between these plates the oceanic plate plunges below the continental plate because of greatest density and when this interaction happens there is metamorphosis of the rocks which are present in this in the region in the surrounding region because of high pressure and this metamorphosis can create landforms on the surface because of volcanic activity and on the other side when there is interaction between oceanic and oceanic plate the same thing happens the denser plate plunges below the lighter plate 
and there is formation of volcanic islands as these volcanic islands are formed in sea they are called as island arc for example the formation of japanese islands philippine islands and other islands like indonesian archipelago can be explained through this interaction so this we'll study in detail later and we have seen the kind of magma that flows through these interactions usually in sea flow spreading we have seen that this is fissure type of volcanic activity where the volcan uh, volcanic magma is basic in nature that is due to the less content of silica in it as a result it flows through a longer distances whereas at the at the interaction of or at the convergent edge or a destructive edge what we usually see magma which is andesitic or acidic in nature as a result it has greater amount of silica and it doesn't flow through longer distances creating conical type mountain landform so other one is transform or transcurrent edge in this picture we can see somewhere here so at the transform edge it is not of great significance as there is no building or destruction of landforms so we can see in this picture which are destructive edges and which are constructive edges which are transform edges san andreas fault is the best example for transform for, for transform interaction or transcurrent interaction of plates whereas other regions like aleutian trench kuril trench and then japanese trench all, all these lines with a triangle on it are the examples of destructive edges where usually trenching takes place and other regions like in the submarine ridges which are constructive in nature or divergent edges what we see is formation of new landform that is the spreading of ocean floor hence it is called as constructive edge so these are three different interactions transform this one is destructive or convergent edge and this is divergent edge or constructive edge so we can see in this picture this is google maps so here we can see this is the divergent edge and then this is trenching we can see the trenching happens somewhere here so this is mainly destructive edge or convergent plate boundary and what we see is a transform fault here this for example california part of california and this extension into the ocean are part of a pacific plate whereas other plate is north american plate so when these plates interact what we see is transform fault so the interaction is parallel to each other where the two plates grind against each other instead of moving towards or away from each other so let us move on to the next important concept for all theories we have seen about evidences so evidences form a very important part of the concept so the questions can be on the core theory or even based on evidences like we have seen in previous mains there was a question on continental drift theory and the evidences in support of it likewise we can have questions based on plate tectonics as well as questions that require you to answer the evidences so the evidences of plate tectonics are very similar to sea flow spreading or that they are the same evidences for example we have seen paleomagnetism in my previous video of sea flow spreading and the nature of rocks as well as seismic activity and volcanic activity so the explanation is same there is no difference so these three are the most important evidences other than this just to add few more points there are few other minor evidences like gravitational anomaly and then temperature gradient we'll see them so i've explained in my previous video video what is paleomagnetism we have seen that rocks of same magnetic alignment are seen equidistant from the ridge or submarine ridge where volcanic activity is intense this is the region of volcanic activity and when rocks flow they travel through the the magma travels through a larger distance and solidifies at a certain point and this solidification act happens with a certain alignment depending on magnetic field lines of the earth for example we can see how magnetic field lines influence this is normal magnetic field as we have today so the magnetic north is at the south pole is facing towards the south pole and the magnetic south towards the north and in reversed when it, the magnetic field is reversed this would be a different scenario so based on these successive reversals we have alignment of rocks for example if this is the alignment of rock during the normal magnetic field period then the alignment of rocks would be in the opposite direction during the reversed magnetic 
field periods that is the alignment simply means that the magnetic substance are aligned according to the magnetic field lines we know that rocks contain ferrous substances which are magnetic in nature and we know that the north pole always repels north pole but attracts towards south pole uh, south magnet uh, south pole of the magnet so this kind of interaction keeps on giving magnet uh, rocks of different orientations so if you want more uh, detailed explanation you can watch my previous video in which i have given a very detailed account of this theory and then nature of rocks we have seen that oceans have comparatively very much younger rocks compared to the continents continents have very old rocks which are few billions of years old whereas the oceanic rocks are only few millions of years old because of constant outpouring of magma and constant solidification of rocks and other than this we have seen how rocks equidistant from the vent are having the same nature so all these are important evidences for plate tectonics and seismic activity so in sea flow spreading we don't consider seismic activity at the uh, convergent edges we only talk about seismic activity that happens along the ridges but in plate tectonics we consider both seismic activity at the ridges as well as at the trenching parts so what we see in this video is zones of earthquakes and volcanoes and this whole zone is called a specific ring of fire which is the major very important zone because of constant seismic activity that is both earthquakes and volcanoes and the other important zones zones are himalayan and alpine belts even here the seismic activity is very intense and this, usually the ridges have volcanoes which are of shallow focus nature so these volcanoes uh, sorry these earthquakes are very less severe whereas the earthquakes happening at the trenching part or at the constructive or uh, destructive edges they are these volcanoes are defocus uh, de sorry these earthquakes are defocus earthquakes as a result the intensity of these earthquakes is greater as that is why we face a severe earthquakes in the himalayan belt as well as in this belt where japan philippine islands are located so the continuity of this volcanic and seismic activity belt is important in explanation of plate tectonics because this whole structure explains the interaction of plates at various regions so other important evidences not so important evidences are gravitational anomaly and temperature gra gradient simply we say there is volcanic output as a result the temperature is here is higher but at the surface the temperature will be much lower so this is temperature anomaly and comparatively the regions above the submarine ridge are at greater temperatures whereas at a certain distance or at a very high large distances from this region the temperature of the ocean water is comparatively lower so even this is another kind of temperature anomaly so in another th another <coughs> thing we see about gravitational anomaly here we see that there is trenching at the interaction of oceanic and continental plates so this is trenching and in trenches there is loss of matter because of trenching as we can see there is a huge depression about few kilometers in depth hence there is less matter in this region and we know that gravitational field is mainly because of matter so where there is matter there is more gravitational field and when there is less matter the gravitational field is low so on earth this region has great matter so the gravitational field will be comparatively higher the gravitational constants constant will be comparatively greater whereas at this part so at the trenching part the mass is lower as a result the gravitational constant will be comparatively lower so this is called as gravitational anomaly so these are the evidences and thanks for watching if you like my video please subscribe to my channel and also give your comments feedback on whether you like these videos or you you want any kind of improvements or usually my videos are long because i try to explain in detail so if you want to cut short the video even then you can give your feedback and thanks for watching keep visiting